Hey guys, it's Heather the Crochet Witch. How are you guys doing today? So welcome to day four of Stranger Things Giving. Um, which is my version of a vlog video series for November. Mav, come up here. Come up here and say hi. Say hi to everybody. Look right there. Look right there. Say hi. Say hi, guys. Say hello. Say, oh no, mama's getting my eye boogies. It happens. It's daily. It's all the time. Yes, yeah, so many. So many. Oh, I need to get your allergy medicine after this, huh? Probably could use one. You wouldn't mind the tree, huh? Are you sleepy boy? Yes. Maverick says hi. He's currently co hosting. Um, I just wanted to step in real quick and do the video get it up and all since it's you know after midnight um maverick and i have company coming over uh nate's coming over to hang out so we're gonna be busy for the rest of the evening he may actually he was gonna um just come on in i told him just to come on in so he may be here while i'm doing the video i don't know um, but anyway, so what have I done today? What have you guys done today? This was, this was my Sunday. I know. So happy Monday for you guys. Cause I know this is starting out the week. I hope your week is starting well. Um, but my Sunday, oh, that also means this will be my last day of vacation as you're watching this. <laughs> I wish that could continue. Um, I moved more yarn off of this shelf that I am trying to take down. So now, um, so I had three cubicles up and up on the top shelf, um, and then an open space that was you know, that would have been another cube. Basically, I emptied three of those, the open space and two of the cubes. So now there's only one cubicle left. Um, and that is, those, those things are upstairs, put away, uh, either in, like some of the yarn went with a project that I'm working on for Christmas. I know, Christmas, me. And you know, it's almost that time of the year, so maybe that project will come out next. Um, and some of it is stuff that I want to work on next, so that got put in a project bag, but it is upstairs with my other to-do list project bags. Um... So yeah, those got, they got cleared out anyway, so because that was the whole point is I'm trying to put them in a place and decide what I do and don't want to keep. I think I've done pretty well in deciding what I don't want to keep as far as that one shelf area. Um, it's more like finding a space for what I do want to keep um, that'll be the problem. But yeah, so I did that today. Yes, sir. Pretty sure, pretty sure he's got, I'm pretty sure Nate's here and he knows I'm in here. So, um, I'm just going to let Maverick keep him company for a minute. So, and the light won't turn off on me. Two birds with one stone. Um, <laughs> oh! Maverick, did I shut the door on you with nobody here? Come on. Come on then. I didn't mean to leave you out. I thought you had company. I was just telling everybody that you were already taken care of. I'm sorry. Are you mad at me? You just wanted to come hang out with mom. That's okay. You can come hang out with mom. Anyway, so I got that taken care of. Um, I played some World of Warcraft. I played some Hearthstone. I got abandoned by my dog again. Um, I got more of my blanket work done, my hexagon blanket, when last we met, I had, this is from my advent yarn, when last we met, I had this row of four, I had this row of four, and it won't look as wonky if you weren't here last night, 
it won't look as wonky because I'm going to put in halves and all that kind of fun stuff. And when I get the base of 20 done, five rows of four or whatever, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to reassess and see if I should add another row and see what yarn I have left and all that kind of stuff. Cause I have some bigger skeins to add in with it. Um, I just wanted to get the base done first, you know, and see how big it's going to be and how it's going to look and all that. And then obviously, like I said, there'll be the little half hexies in also. Anyway, so like I, hexi blankets to me always look so wonky before you get the havies, the havesies put in. Um, so I just wanted to clarify. It won't be like this forever. They'll be like, you know, halfy right here and all that. Um, anyway, this one was kind of alone on its own out here. I got this one done today and I got this one done today. So those are in the, the pattern mix. So I, I got one more to do there for this row. I hate these ends. You know, like traditionally I always, I think I'm to the point where I know this is going to be, it's going to be this project, whatever this project ends up being. So I think I'm safe to sew my ends in. But originally I think that's why I didn't. So I should probably just do that before it gets out of hand and makes me upset. And <laughs> But yeah, so here we are. Here we are so far. Oh look, it could be like a it could be like a hexy shirt. <laughs> it's like a bib right now. <laughs> but that's what I that's what I got done so far with that today. And I, I did go ahead and add the uh like I had the 24 small mini skeins in here, and I said from that same dyer I'd had the 13. So I went ahead and added the 13. Hi! You coming back? Come on. You can come back in. You never have to wait and see what I'm doing. Puppy distraction. I got the same, uh, or I'm sorry, I put the same dyer's lot in here. So I have a 13 nights of Halloween and a 24 countdown in here of this minis. And then I have the big skein down here that's not caked up. So, and the big skein will probably do the half hexes around the edges. I, would, I think there, there would be enough for that, yeah. So anyway, that's my plan for it. And I do have a Malabrigo, I think it's a Rio that's the same fiber um, and weight and everything. Um, so if, in case that's not enough, I have a backup plan. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I got working on for that. And for some reason I brought my hook with me in here, even though I've been working on it out there. But I'm using a, a seven, Susan Bates US seven for that, which is a 4.5 millimeter. So yes, working on that. And then I pulled out this yarn because since we were talking about like using yarn that, you know, instead of just letting it sit there and using up stuff and everything, um, I had been kind of saving this around for a while. But this is some yarn that I have that I think is really pretty. Um, <clears throat> it's Annie's Hook and Needle Club yarn. It's also listed as a two fine, which is what uh, the yarn is that I showed you. Oh. Let me, let me show you now that I made the video. I can just show you. Let me pull one out here. This is the yarn that I had sitting next to me for so long. But the Big Twist Supernova. Mm, mm, I love it so much. But that's what this is listed as. And they're both roving yarns. Um, and I'd say they're pretty similar actually. But this, does it have a color on here? 100% acrylic for this one, whereas that one's wool and acrylic. I don't think there's a color. Because I am I got this from... Uh, I got this from Ella at No Catchy Name. And uh, she had gifted it to me, like, quite a while ago. And I've just been hoarding it up. Like, I didn't know what to do with it. And I wanted to save it for something nice. And, I mean, I still hope I make something nice with it. But, um... And that the time has come. I want to make something with it. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe like what I I think I want to do is make like a, a granny stitch like beanie 
with it. That's what I'm kind of thinking. And if there's enough here, because you know I'm really bad with, really bad with uh, yardage. Let me see if it even shows the yardage on here. There's 287 yards in each one. So there's just over 500 yards. Yeah, there's, just, there's over 500 yards. Um, but I would like to make like this, like a granny stitch, um, like a cowl neck warmer situation to go along with it. I think that would be really pretty. And they're in these nice, like sunsetty colors. Um, yeah. So I think that would be really nice, really pretty. And it's like this nice, like roving. But yeah, that's something I thought I would pull out and work on too. And, you know, while I love to sit there and look at it, because it's been taking up residency ever since she sent it to me right here next to me. Like sometimes when I'm looking off wistfully at my collections and stuff, like that's one of the things I've been looking at is, our, you know, these two beautiful balls of yarn. But I think I would also like to look at them in hat form. <laughs> so yeah, I might uh, work this up as something. And um, so I pulled those out. And I also want to make, uh, I'm thinking tonight, probably not in this color. I'm probably thinking I'm going to dig down in that box that I just got this from and get the uh, terraforming out because I have more of that than I do this. And this one right now is unavailable which is the Milky Way Galaxy. I, I think terraforming is still available. So I'll probably use terraforming, but I'm gonna make a, I talked in my video, in this video about it, I'm gonna make a uh, swatch. And this stuff has the same fiber makeup as scarfy yarn, right? Which is like 20, I think it's 20%, or at least it's similar to scarfy. I think it's 20% wool and 80% acrylic or something pretty similar to that. Yep, 20% wool, 80% premium acrylic. Scarfy's not premium acrylic, but you know, <laughs> it'll do. <laughs> um, but the instructions on this, as per most Joann's yarn, um, it does say it's machine washable and it says no ironing and do not bleach, but then it says do not tumble dry and lay flat, which, okay, you would assume maybe because of the wool. But other Joanne yarns that are acrylic also say that. And I'm telling you, I wash them all the time and everything. A lot of people say that. Um, and my plan for this stuff was to make blankets with basically all of it. If not a blanket, definitely a cardigan. Um, well, with scarfy yarn, I wash and dry that stuff all the time. <laughs> I... Don't lay it flat or even hang it on a line. I, nothing like that. I, I wash it and I dry it. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking I would like to make a square of this tonight because uh, I have the laundry all set to go. When David gets home, he's just going to throw his clothes in and wash it. So I want the square to be in that <laughs> laundry so I can report back and see how it launders. <laughs> Because uh, I really want to get into this stuff. I just don't want to like commit to like some awesome blanket and then have it be like this big or <laughs> mutated in some way. But I think I'm going to do that tonight also. Um, probably do that before I play around with the Annie's yarn actually. Because I really want to, you know, get that done. And Yeah, so that's on my agenda for tonight. But push that back in there so I don't manage to lose it somehow because I will cry but yeah that's that's what I've been doing this and planning today and everything um I accidentally slept in did you guys know that it was a time change <laughs> because I've been on vacation I totally did not have that thought in my mind whatsoever I would have warned you guys at least <laughs> don't forget the time change because I'm usually up on it um I was awake during I'm always awake during the time change because of me being up overnight um and I never even noticed the time changing like on my computer or my cell phone and uh coincidentally while I slept 
David had also messed with the uh, electric because he's been putting that new electrical box in. I might have mentioned here. And um, I know I told Courtney that. So may maybe I mentioned it in the video. Maybe I hadn't. But he had turned the electric off. So stuff like the microwave and the bedroom clocks were already messed up to begin with. Um, <laughs> so we could not figure out why stuff was so wrong. <laughs> I overslept like so badly. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess that was technically yesterday that I did that, but I thought it was a funny story anyway. But, <laughs> yep, me and that, that time change, it got me, but not in the same way that you, you know, like normally people are like, oh, I forgot. I just overslept. It was because of the electric going off and everything else. And I, I just didn't know that it happened, period. Usually I'm really happy about the fall time change. <laughs> but anyway, did you guys even know it happened? <laughs> and usually I see a bunch of warnings. I didn't even know that. I didn't even see anything. Maybe it's because I haven't been on social media a whole lot this week. Like, I've been on TikTok here and there, but that's about it. Not even a lot, really. Anyway. <sighs> Guys, I don't know what to do with me. <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to... I'm not going to keep our company waiting that long. Um, so I'm going to jump into the squares for today, draw the new square, and then I'm going to let you guys go and get on your merry way. And I have something in my eye. Oh, um, somebody did ask, by the way, when I was talking about the whole reoccurring eye ulcer thing the other day and the, the dry eye, if they could give me penicillin. Uh, no, like they could, when it first happened and it was actually like infected, they gave me, uh, they gave me something that, that was a really long time ago. I don't remember what they gave me. They can't give me penicillin because I'm allergic to penicillin, but they gave me, uh, whatever they give you. I don't think, I think if you're allergic to penicillin, you're also allergic to amoxicillin. But, so maybe it was like ampicillin. Or it's the other way around. You're allergic to ampicillin, so they give you amoxicillin. Whatever. It's been a very long time since I've had any kind of thing like that. But, uh, yeah, like they did then when it was actually, like, infected. Or maybe to make sure it wasn't infected or whatever because of the, the original scrapage. But after it started just, like, reoccurring and doing it on its own, they haven't, they haven't re-prescribed anything like that. Maybe they would have if they did the uh, the operation on it or the surgery or whatever um, and actually, like, scraped it. But, no, they're, I'm not going to let them do that. <laughs> like, maybe if they knocked me out, they could have tried it. But um, the fact that, like, my eye keeps doing that naturally and it's the same thing they wanted to do to it anyway, it... Mm, and it seems to have gotten a lot better. Like I said, it's it's really the dry eye that gives me the problem f now and then. And it's not anywhere near to the level that that ulcer has done. And they did say sometime over time it might heal itself. So I'm, I'm wondering, in fact, now if maybe, maybe the ulcer is all but healed. Because, I mean, we're down to maybe a couple times a year that it, that it like, flares up or whatever. Maybe even once a year. I mean, I really haven't kept track because of the... I've had dry eye pain a lot more often than than that. They're just so similar that, like, at first when I was getting it, you almost couldn't tell. <laughs> um, except dry eye switches because, I mean, it's not in one eye or the other. It, that's in both. When I first started getting the dry eye, I, was, I actually was like, oh, my God, what, what eye was my ulcer in? I can't remember anymore. It's been so long. Like, it was a horrifying thought that I couldn't remember. And then it didn't matter because I woke up the next day with the pain in the other eye. <laughs> so, like, at first, before I realized and talked to people and realized it was dry eye, 
<laughs> I was thinking I was just going crazy. <laughs> But no, I mean, that was a really long answer, but no, um, it, they don't prescribe any kind of antibiotics or anything for it. Like I said, they, they did originally, like the very first time, but uh, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> um, oh, that whole long answer was just because I got something in my eye. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, the squares. So today, the today squares for the Stranger Things, um, the Stranger Things, I was going to say make along, but only one person was really making them along with me, um, my own, for my own personal make along, um, was I drew flow, which we talked a little bit about flow yesterday and put up the picture that I found for her. Um, but Flo is the uh, the secretary gal from the post the post office from the police office um, down at the station. She she goes and I believe she grabs lunch for the guys. Um, she definitely has like the healthy snacks from here and there because she's always trying to you know put an apple in Jim's hand or um, she gets sent on errands a lot and all that fun stuff that must have been great especially in the 80s when <laughs> you didn't have the technology of uh you know door dashing or <laughs> ordering ahead or anything like that um i don't know it still probably would have been fine though like i wouldn't have minded that i i feel like it's still about it got to be a better job than some things right especially some things back in the 80s because i'm sure without the technology a lot of other jobs were less desirable <laughs> um anyway so yeah uh the, f the picture that I had was uh she was rocking this really light lilac colored blouse and her vest at first I thought was like a brown but it's a really dark plum color uh and I happen to have a scrap of that really dark plum that I had used in Andy's blanket so I got to work with that beautiful uh, anti-pilling from uh, Hobby Lobby. And then I had, uh, I actually had almost a whole skein of this Red Heart, that, but I've had it forever. This is from my grandma. This is from my grandma. It's one of my last ones uh, that she gave me. So uh, I think the colors matched her, her blouse and vest pretty well. And then I did a reverse square for her. The reverse square makes this look so much darker to me on the inside, even though it's the same color as this. It's like, especially if you hold them up separately. But yeah, same, same color. Oh, back here it's a little bit better, I guess, but yeah. So those are my flow squares. I really like flow. As far as side characters go, especially, she's one of my favorites. I think I say that about a lot of the side characters, though. Like, I just, I really enjoy, like, a good side character, just like I do a good villain. They're so important, you know? You can't have just all main characters. Just like you can't have just all good guys. It just can't happen. So, obviously, I'm feeling pretty chatty tonight, which is a bad thing when I have somebody waiting on me. So let us just get this drawing here done. So I let you guys get on your way with your Monday. Who are we gonna get today? Ow! We got Bob Newby. Bob Newby, superhero. <laughs> I got a picture of Bob for you right here. Um. I freaking love Bob. Although, he does give pretty bad advice to Will. <laughs> so I'm not sure if Will's that big of a fan. <laughs> That's not Bob's fault. I mean, I think we could all agree, those of you who have watched, we could all agree it's not really Bob's fault. I think, I think from like a, like a stepdad or dad, you know, from a parent, from an adult point of view who didn't know what was going on with this whole upside down thing and, you know... Mind Flayer, Demogorgon, anything kind of deal. I think Bob gave pretty good advice. Like, you know, he was relating to Will and um, telling him about his bad dreams and, you know, trying to help him get over it. If it was really just a bad dream, that's, it's really not so bad. Um, 
like if I rejoice as a mom, I would be like, oh, that's really sweet that he's trying to, you know, bond with my kid and help him get over his fears. And, you know, if, if Will was having like some normal fear with some normal, like, you know, if he was just dreaming of a clown or something, that that would be good advice. Poor Bob couldn't possibly know that the mind flayer would be like, yes, field day, <laughs> you know. Um, so he can't be blamed for that, but it definitely was a, was a bad, bad choice. But, you know, what can you do? So anyway, we love Bob. I love Bob anyway. Um, his, uh, his end of season end was was sad um and i'm still very glad that dart did not take part in that and uh yeah it's all i it's all i want to say about that <laughs> i think i think he should have stuck around i think him and joyce would have been really cute um because you know i have pretty strong opinions on the whole joyce hopper thing but i do want to see joyce happy i think her and bob would have been really sweet together Although I do think her and Murray would be really cute together. So I'm still pushing that. I'm still pushing it. I think they would be. Anyway. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. But I will definitely talk to you tomorrow. Um, all right. I love you guys. Bye.